Greeting. We welcome you on this second Sunday in the season of Lent, a season of meditation, reflection, and prayers as we journey to the cross. This week, we will examine our time when our spiritual gas tank may be running low or running near empty. Yet God continues to pursue us, encourages us, and replenishes us so that we may stay the course throughout our journey of faith. Here now our reading this week coming from the book of Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 to 7 and 15 to 16 and from the gospel of Mark chapter 8 verses 31 to 38. Listen to the word of God. When Abram was 99 years old, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestors of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenants between me and you and your offspring after you throughout, your gener throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. When he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed after the third day, after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciple, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowds with his disciples and said to them, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For, their, for those who want to save their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what would it profit them to gain the whole world and, and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of, God, of his Father with the holy angels. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. In the Old Testament lessons that we read earlier from the book of Genesis, we came across the patriarch and the matriarch of the Judeo-Christian faith, 
Abraham and Sarah. Both were summoned by God to go on a spiritual journey. Not knowing where they are, not knowing where they were heading and for how long, Abraham and Sarah were willing to go wherever the Lord was leading them and surrendering whatever they had as part of their ultimate test of faith and spiritual discipline. Every time I read the story of Abraham and Sarah's wilderness journey, it reminds me of my own personal experience over 37 years ago when my family first immigrated into this country. We too had to surrender almost everything, our career, our school, our relatives and our friends, and basically started everything from scratch again. For those of you who are also immigrants to this country, I'm sure you can all relate to this as well. There was this empty feeling a wilderness moments of not knowing what the Lord may have prepared or installed for us. You basically took a giant leap of faith and trusting that the Lord will lead you through whatever unknown circumstances. When it comes to emptiness, there were two kinds of emptiness. First, there were the physical emptiness, and then there is the spiritual emptiness. Many of us are probably more familiar with the feeling of being physically empty. When we haven't eaten for days or feeling lethargic, physically tired with little or no energy left, not even lifting our heads or not, not even lifting up our heads or getting out of the bed. I remember when I was working with the youths, we used to have this annual 30 hour of famine drive in order to raise awareness of world hunger and homelessness. So we experienced this physical emptiness of without food. On the other hand, there are the spiritual emptiness. That when we feel that there is this spiritual void, this spiritual void or lack of belonging of our faith, we're not quite sure of where we are in light of our relationship with God. We feel insecure about ourselves and worry about our future there's this spiritual yearning to be in God's presence, but we're not quite there yet, or we don't feel that we, we quite belong in God's presence. We want to yearn to feel safe and secure. Both physical and spiritual emptiness often go hand in hand, hand in hand. I know a friend who works for the Bowery Mission in Lower Manhattan, where they not only feed people physically with a hot meal every day, 24, 7, 365, 365 days, rain, snow, or shine. Even during the pandemic, they continue to serve meals for those who may need a meal by offering them meals to go they also provide a limited number of overnight beds for those who are homeless. However, for those who come for the meal, they must also participate in a short religious worship service where they would get their spiritual feeding as well before their physical feeding. The Bowery Mission believes one's physical and spiritual feelings often go hand in hand as one affects the others. During this Lenten season, we journeyed, 
we journey these 40 days and 40 nights with Christ through the wilderness. Although he was physically empty, he was, however, being spiritually fed through his constant prayers and meditation with the Father. He might be tempted by Satan, but at the end, he knew he would persevere at the end. In the same way, over the course of our own wilderness journey, God may also put us to the test of our spiritual readiness. When our spiritual tank was running near empty, where else could we turn to? We ultimately come to experience this gratification and joy upon being filled up by God's abundant blessings. For those who drive, you might have experienced this feeling before. When you're in the middle of nowhere and your car is running out of gas and there is no gas station in sight, what do you do? How many of you have had that experience before? You become so desperate and panicking, not knowing where the gas station may be. One time I remember I was driving in the rural part of rural part of the northwestern New Jersey. It was late at night and I thought I had enough gas to get back onto the main road on Route 23, where there were plenty of gas stations along. Lo and behold, when I got there, many of the gas stations had already been closed. Then I realized it was New Year's Eve, no wonder. Many of these gas stations were closing early. And I didn't think of that ahead of time. So what should I do? Do I have any choice? I have no choice but to be keep on driving and driving and hoping that I will run into a gas station that was still open. But the more I drive, the more gas I would consume. It makes me more nervous and worry each, at, by each moment. All this was happening while the fuel signal kept flashing up, then it disappears. Then it came up again until eventually the light stayed on permanently. That's the final warning that your gas tank was about to go empty. At any given moment, your car may just stall. I was getting desperate. I was getting worried. So I began to pray out loud. To make this long story short, I did eventually make it to the gas station. They were about an hour, uh, about one and a half miles away. I filled the gas tank up to the top, even though it was a bit more expensive than I would normally pay, but that's okay. The feeling of being replenished was one of the most gratifying feeling in my life. I don't have to worry about not getting home that night because I know my car will get me back. That's how desperate and gratifying that feeling was that when we are running on an empty spiritual tank, God will come at the most opportune time into our presence and rescue us and lift us up. Similarly, our lifelong journey of faith can also feel this way. We wrestle with our relationship with God when we feel distance and foreign with God. God tests our faith in the least expected moments, just as Jesus was being tested out in the wilderness. God will provide the necessary resources that we will need in order to go on this lifelong journey of faith with him. God will lift us up and lead us back towards the path of righteousness 
whenever we may fall astray or when we are lost or simply run out of gas. The story of Abraham and Sarah reminds us of how we may also be challenged by God each day to empty ourselves in order to experience the fullness of God's grace. We must fix our eyes and focus our hearts upon the promises of God, as God may challenge us to take life risks and venture out into uncharted territories or try something, something new that we've never tried before. But Abraham and Sarah simply follow God's plan as an act of obedience. But even still, they had their moments of doubts as well. When God told Abraham and Sarah that they would bear a son at their old age, they laugh. Chances are, we would have laughed as well. Nevertheless, they came to realize that God's plan was much bigger than their own. And they had no choice but obediently follow where the Spirit leads them. As we read in our New Testament lessons from the Gospel of Mark, Jesus also invited us to embark on a similar faith journey that Abraham and Sarah took as we engage in our spiritual discipline of denying ourselves, taking up and taking up our cross and follow him. We must lay aside our personal worldly desires and fix our eyes and our hearts upon the heavenly prize. This is a matter of our hearts, our allegiance and devotions. Do we just say who we claim who we are? Or do we let God hold us accountable for our actions and our thoughts? Bear in mind that this is never about us, but it is all about God and what God has already planned and accomplished thus far for God's people. For God is not done and God is not done with us just yet. For those who want to save their lives will lose it, and those who lose their life for Christ's sake and for the sake of the gospel will save, will save it. When it comes to taking up our cross, 20th century contemporary theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer once wrote, quote, how is a disciple, how is a disciple to know which is his or her cross. We receive it upon entering the discipleship of the suffering Lord and come to recognize it in the community of Jesus. Friends, through Christ's suffering and the emptying of himself upon the cross on our behalf, we come to recognize our own cross to bear for the sake of others. This is part of our calling. This is part of our own discipleship towards our, towards our journey to the cross and our faith. Abraham and Sarah empty themselves to go out into the wilderness by faith. They were met by God and received God's ultimate blessings and promises. God humbled Abraham and Sarah and reminded us that we shall come with nothing and would go with nothing as well. From dust we came and to dust we shall return. What about us? Are we willing to empty ourselves also so that we may taste God's promises of hope 
for our future? Are we willing to deny ourselves by putting Christ first above all? Take on our own cross in following Jesus wholeheartedly and engage ourselves in God's ongoing mission in this world. During this season of Lent, may God continue to challenge us to see things in this world through a different perspective. As much as the world may seem to be flipped upside down or inside out. Even when we may have our own differences in opinions and ideology, ideolo ideology, ideology on various issues of our times, let us look above and beyond our differences and lean toward the wholeness of God's community and the eternal kingdom that is awaiting for us. Let us continue to run this race that Christ has started, even when our spiritual tank might be running near empty. Let us wash one another's feet by emptying ourselves, both physically and spiritually, so that we may be filled once again by the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen.